All right, welcome back to another episode of Mean Pomeranians. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, we changed our mm-hmm. name. Uh, so what did we? What are we going to talk about? Past lives. Mm-hmm. The movie. Um, it's an A twenty four production. Yeah, it I is. assume. Mm-hmm. Directed by Celine Song. Yes. Starring Greta Lee and Tao Yu. Mm-hmm. The American guy is John yes. Magaro. Okay. Magaro. Yeah. But I'd heard about this movie. Mm-hmm. It seemed very interesting, and it has a lot of things that parallel our lives in yeah, a way. Yeah, for sure. And uh, looking into the background of this movie, it's it seems like it mirrors the life of the director very much. Mm, did you read up on that? I did. I read up mm-hmm. a little bit on, on her. This is, I think, her first um, major film. It felt autobiographical. It felt very autobiographical, yeah, yeah. didn't it? Why don't we set up the plot? Do you want to talk about it a little bit? Sure. Um, The protagonist, Nora, is born in Korea, and she's living in what looks like our neighborhood in Seoul. Yeah, Uh, it looked like Yaksu. (laughs) Yeah, but it said Yongsangu, so I'm presuming that that? they were, it was shot, I mean, it's close to us, but I'm Mm -hmm. presuming it was shot like somewhere in Pogwangdong or like HBC. Oh, okay. You know, like it was Mm -hmm. very hilly and you can see Namsan Tower. Yeah, true. Um, I think she was around like fifth or sixth grade Mm -hmm. when she, her and her family immigrate to Canada. Mm -hmm. And before that happens, she has a crush, Hyo Song. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, they like each other, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And they are friends, childhood friends, and who like each other. Mm -hmm. And um, she suddenly has to move away to Canada. And this was the 90s, so they didn't really keep in touch or anything through right. the internet or whatever. So they just com- completely lost contact. Mm-hmm. And then um, Hyo Song looks for her on Facebook mm-hmm. around 2012, mm-hmm. it looks like. So that's 12 years later, right. they say. They don't meet, but they start Skyping every day. Mm-hmm. And she's living in New York. He's living in Seoul. Mm-hmm. And they're talking every day, but they don't really, they can't really make plans to meet in person. Mm -hmm. And so Nora cuts it off. Mm -hmm. And then another 12 years pass. So that was an interesting little thing that happened when she, when she cut it off. Why do you think she cut off their communication? Uh, I think it was because she felt frustrated by just talking on Skype yeah, all the time and I she wanted so more probably but also it was like she wanted more but she also wanted to move on with her life in New York mm-hmm. and find something real right as opposed to because I think for her Hyo Song represents Korea mm-hmm. not to say not to undermine the connection that they had mm-hmm. but I think she was very much um, nostalgic about her childhood and about Korea. And mm-hmm. Hyo Song had, you know, represents that, the life that she could have had. And so he represents all the what ifs. Yeah. And um, which plays a big part in the dialogue uh, several times mm-hmm. the what if. And yeah. I think she was just like, this is a fantasy. I'm not going to pursue this because it's getting, I'm developing feelings and, you mm-hmm. know, it's just not going to go anywhere kind of thing. That's probably why she cut off. Well, why do you think she cut off? No, I agree with you. Yeah. I think that's probably it. I think she reached a point where she realized that this divide between them, living, mm-hmm. she's living in New York, he's living in Seoul, and that the divide between them is just... They're either going to just keep doing this Skype conversation Mm -hmm. or someone's going to have to stop it. Right. And, you know, that resonated with me a little bit because Mm -hmm. I could feel her difficulty, the difficulty of something that isn't, like you said, real, Mm -hmm. that is over a screen, you know, that we had to live through so much during the pandemic, that doesn't have a real connection. And Mm -hmm. she's in, you know, she's in New York and she has ambitions and she wants to move on and mm-hmm. do her thing even the, and 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 I agree with you as well that she, it's because she is has these feelings and obviously nostalgia is a, is an, an an odd kind of emotion and so she's not sure how she feels about him and mm-hmm. it's just easier to just yeah cut it 
yeah, so they both move on, mm-hmm. and an, an additional 12 years pass, mm-hmm. and he visits her in New York all of a sudden, um, and that's when they meet for the first time. As in adults. Like, as adults, mm-hmm. um, in like 20-something years, right? Mm-hmm. So that's when I think the story kind of started for me. It, it, this is kind of like in the middle of the movie, I think, with it, where they meet. But that's when an actual thing, like, you know, it becomes like a little bit plot driven. Um, this movie isn't plot driven whatsoever. I feel like it was sort of like a, it moves very much like real life, where it's not very dramatic and people make sane, realistic decisions and they're not like insanely reactionary. Yeah, I saw somewhere else someone comparing it to like French cinema. Yeah, I was just going to say, I was just thinking, um, we don't have a lot of movies like this anymore Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because our attention spans are probably shorter than they used to. But it was nice to just watch the scenery and Mm -hmm. watch people interact in sort of like a a more normal Mm -hmm. but also complex way. It does remind me of some French cinema, Mm -hmm. but also Korean cinema Yeah, in the sense of characters not saying everything that they need to say mm. trying to find the right way to say it right which is to me a lot of something i see a lot in korean films mm, yeah. is trying to find the right way to say mm. something and sometimes there's a misunderstanding and that's mm. part of the melodrama the main protagonist she reminded me of you in a lot of ways mm. obviously because you have a similar story yeah but but the 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 complexity of your personality is that you are American and French and Korean all mm. at the same time and manifesting in different ways at the same time. And she does that. Yeah. Like she's very Western in the way right. that she is trying to deal with things rationally. Mm. But then she's a very nostalgic Korean woman Yeah, at the same time. Yeah. And I think she's kind of negotiating that in herself. Yeah, yeah. And they're the, the men in her life. I mean, not that Hyo Song is actually in her life this, in the same way that her husband is, mm-hmm. but these two men are drastically different. Yeah. But they're drastically different parts of herself. Mm. At the very end of the movie, she really just bursts into tears mm-hmm. after saying goodbye to Hyo Song in the arms of her husband, right? Mm-hmm. The understanding that her husband had of the whole situation was. I mean, just insane. What do you mean insane? Like, he he really understood this mm-hmm. situation mm-hmm. without being bitter or without making it about him. I mean, it mm-hmm. was he was just really, like, the sweetest, just the most yeah. selfless, right. you know, character. Was it? believable in my case no like i'm not saying that like i don't know anybody like that but that character was a lot less believable than really yeah i really i i didn't like him at first Mm -hmm. i really don't like in movies playing out dramatic scenes over screens i really Mm -hmm. don't like that Mm -hmm. and you see it more and more and i think it would have been better if the screen situation hadn't been there if it was maybe his business had to take him to New York every once in a while or something like that. Oh, you mean like the internet? You yeah, mean I just like don't like the in- I don't like phones. tablets, okay, yeah. you know, as a way of developing a relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's something that you and I did during the pandemic. Right. So it was very realistic. But the point that I was kind of getting at is I liked I liked their connection, even though it was screened. Mm-hmm. And so when he came along, when, when Arthur mm-hmm. came along, I didn't really like him. I don't know okay. why. Um, I thought he was kind of a frumpy, average white guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and we didn't really get his personality. Mm. But then over time, we did get his personality. Right. And at that point, I started identifying with him more and more. Mm. And the thing I identified with was was <laughs> just being on the outside of language. Yeah. He, he even talks about this. Mm. And there's some nice dialogue writing yeah. here. He talks about this. He says that you have a whole language that I, I can't be a part of. Mm-hmm. I could learn all the Korean, you know, but I'm, I'm not going to be able to get there. And I've had that thought many times. Mm-hmm. You know, no matter how much I study Korean, I'm not going to be able to 
seed myself in that world mm. of language because right. it's not just words being spoken. It's a whole yeah. way of thinking. Yeah, for sure. And so I felt that. And then there's the scene in the restaurant when the two childhood friends are talking and he's on the left. And I was kind of paying attention to the framing of, of mm -hmm. the director and the way she and the cinematographer framed it. You know, she had a three shot and then all of a sudden there was a whole lot of time on mm -hmm. a two shot mm -hmm. of the two and he was framed out. Yeah. And then we had a reverse shot from behind them. And again, he was framed out. And I thought, oh, is this a different, like, is this later in the night? Mm -hmm. are, they, are they at the yeah, bar yeah, yeah. or something? Um, but no, it was still the same spot. Mm -hmm. They had just completely opened up a world between themselves yes. by her framing mm -hmm. and he was left out. Yeah. And at first she was kind of like translating and apologizing mm -hmm. <laughs> and then she gave up mm -hmm. and they were having this very intimate conversation while he's sitting there. Right. I definitely felt for his situation because yeah, I've been too. there many times in that. Yeah. I did feel for him too mm -hmm. because especially because of how intimate of a conversation they were having with him, like, right there. I, I get it, mm -hmm. but um, it was it was hard to watch. Like, it wasn't the easiest mm -hmm. scene to watch um, out of the movie. It's kind of the crux scene, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, because they become more and more intimate in their conversation mm -hmm. while he's sitting mm -hmm. there. And there was something, yeah, a little bit heartbreaking there. Yeah, it was very heartbreaking on all... I, I fell for all of the characters. Yeah, yeah. That was that scene just sort of it's heartbreaking for all of the characters because mm -hmm. there was also this one line that Hyo Sung had where he says something like, I never knew it would be such a heartbreaking thing to actually like your husband. Right. Because he was like, It turns out that you are married to somebody amazing. Like mm -hmm. he's a really good guy. And I don't know why, but that's very heartbreaking to mm -hmm. me. Um so I felt for that. I, I feel, I felt for her a lot um, because of just how lonely that makes you when you are caught between, when you have to give one up mm -hmm. for the other. Mm -hmm. And she definitely did. Mm -hmm. I kind of cheated in a weird way is that like I live in Asia with you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I get to have everything. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like I, you know, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. I don't feel in any way lacking. Like we live closer to my family mm -hmm. and like I get to live in my own country. I mean, now, we're, we're living in Thailand now, but mm -hmm. like, you know, we, we get to be based in my country mm -hmm. and close to my family. And then I also have you mm -hmm. in my country. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't really give up anything, but she probably felt like her childhood self and what is essentially very Korean about her had left with him mm -hmm. that night when he went to the airport, mm -hmm. when he went back to Seoul. Mm -hmm. And that's why oh, she burst into tears. Oh, I don't I, think she's in love with him. Oh, okay. I had a different, I had a different mm -hmm. way of looking at that. And I love that there's ambiguity in mm -hmm. this and there's no right or wrong. But I definitely read in that, because there's, um, yeah, obviously we're giving away the ending of the movie. Um, he has to leave to go back to, I guess he's going back to Seoul mm -hmm. at that point. She says, I'll walk you to the Uber. Mm -hmm. And then they're walking to the Uber and they're not really saying much to each other, if anything. He's waiting for his Uber and they stop and they just kind of look at each other. Mm -hmm. And you're wondering what's going to happen here. I won't say what happens. Mm -hmm. um, but then... After he gets in the taxi, um, yeah, she walks back. We get a long tracking shot of her just walking, and you can feel her heavy feet, mm -hmm. right? You can feel the emotion even in her body. And he's waiting on the steps in their mm -hmm. townhouse, I guess, whatever it is. And, um, and then, yeah, she bursts into tears. I think it's because she is so burdened by the sliding doors mm -hmm. of two worlds. Yeah, yeah. And that she did choose mm -hmm. one world. And in choosing that one world, she's left behind mm -hmm. the Kore the, the, not only the Korean world, but the, but the world with him. Mm -hmm. So it's not only that Arthur represents uh, America and 
Kyosung represents Korea. It's the individuals too, right? Yeah, it's that obviously. She, yeah, 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 yeah. She has she has um, yeah. definite feelings for him. Yeah. And there's a what if. Yeah. And that's romantic. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so I felt that to me that was that was the tears, and then, um, but that's such a pull. I mean, that wh- who do you belong to? What yeah. do you belong to? Mm-hmm. Not just in this identity sense, but, right, but right, in the right. deep in the deep part of your yeah, heart, yeah. and the deep part of your language, and the deep part of your culture, and your sense of mm-hmm. self. Because she, it's interesting. They said something in the restaurant where she said, "I'm not that girl anymore. Mm-hmm. Like I left that girl behind for you," which is an odd thing to say. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think that that's really true. I think that who you are at 12 years old just doesn't leave. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, so she may have just trying mm-hmm. to be convincing herself of that. I don't know. But at the same time, she has left mm-hmm. and she has come to this other world and she's made a life in that world. Mm-hmm. It's just to me, this idea of worlds and what do you belong to? Mm-hmm. And what do you nurture? Yeah. When you're draw- when you're torn between two of them. Right. It's impossible. And I think that's what the tears were. Yeah. It, we're talking about similar things, though. Uh, yeah, that, that's kind of, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I don't disagree with you yeah. on that. Um, and there is this concept of inyon, right? That yeah. Is the, yeah, please talk about the, that. The theme I, of the whole, yeah. Say it again. The theme of the whole yeah. movie, I think. Um, it's based on this concept of inyon. And inyon means uh, fate, but I think in the movie they said it means providence. Yeah, right. they said providence. Mm-hmm. I would say that it's fate, sort of like, you know, or... I, I don't know how to explain this word in English. Like, it just doesn't... And, and when she explained it, I was like, hmm. Like, it's not that I disagreed with uh-huh. the explanation. I was just kind of like... Oh, I don't know if anybody's going to understand. <laughs> mm. Well, um, she describes it as in the movie as mm-hmm. um, through the action of brushing yourself against somebody else in their life. So it's it that's based on this um uh what is it proverb? Right? It means even if you brush um, your sleeve with somebody, that's inyan. Like you meet somebody and it was kind it's kind of like, oh, it's a, it's a it's a huge coincidence. It's a it's like a fateful coincidence, mm-hmm. you know? And uh it implies both that it's a coincidence and that it's not a coincidence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that in order for this to happen, you had so many past lives, so many things happened in during so many past lives for that to ha- for you to meet in this life mm. and in this world mm. right and um an example that she used is that a married couple would have had to have 8000 layers of that during 8000 like thousands of lifetimes in order to meet as a married couple in this life so mm. we had it implies that we had so many things happen to us during so many lifetimes in order for us to meet here, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and this word is used a lot in Korean. Um, and it's like, I guess it's based on having a past life, right? So it's mm. based on this concept of having, being born again and again and again. One Reincarnation. Reincarnation. And one of the examples, like in our family, we talk about Yume, our dog, mm-hmm. A lot in in, mm-hmm. in those terms, mm-hmm. you know. How did she come to us? Like out of all of the rescue dogs, mm-hmm. like <laughs> mm-hmm. how is it that she came to our family? Because she's like a right. random dog. She's not bound by blood or right. you know anything. We we didn't have to keep her. We didn't have to like invite her into our home, mm-hmm. but we did, mm-hmm. and that is definitely Inyon. We intercepted in this yeah. life, and we became family, right? That's a very strong inyon. And at the very end, um, Hyosung and Nora talk about their inyon. And he says, this is where our inyon ends in this life, right? We were not supposed to, you leave. You're the one who leaves. And we, this is where it ends. Meaning... Somehow they didn't meet in this life as a couple, right? They didn't 
get to fall in love and do all that because she because if they had if they were meant to be together they wouldn't be in living in such different cities so far away mm -hmm. and they wouldn't have met now with her husband mm -hmm. at the same table and that's literally what he says and that's a very korean way of mm -hmm. seeing that situation mm -hmm. instead of for example i don't know i don't it, this isn't cultural but some people would you know get a divorce and then move to seoul you know what i mean like try to like move the situation mm -hmm. around to and then and western ideas are all about manifesting like what do i want figure out who you are figure out what you want and manifest it mm -hmm. and i feel like there is a a gap between what they're talking about here and that this manifesting kind of yeah, yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That difference. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah there's much more of a, um, a willingness to integrate fate into the milieu. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and also, like, I'm not, like, super fatalistic, but I don't think that I am a believer in forcing things. Me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I see a lot of people who are obviously, like, they don't think like we do. Mm -hmm. Like, they are, they think that they can, kind of, out of will, they can. Mm -hmm. And that's another way of living, you know. Mm -hmm. But Nora strikes me as somebody who, and what, what is, and that's essentially very Korean to me, like, that, that feels very Korean of her to not want to force things because she says something when, when she when her and her husband are in bed you know they're trying to fall asleep and he talks to her about his insecurities about like how if if you had met somebody else mm -hmm. at the workshop at the artist residency you might have married him mm -hmm. who, somebody else who liked the same movies and liked the yeah, same exactly. books, right? Yeah. And it didn't have to be me. Whereas with Hyosung, you seem to have something like the implication right. is that you, it's something deeper, right? Exactly. And she says, no, this is my life. And this is which what is it very, is. Which is very realistic. Mm -hmm. That's very practical. Yeah. Um, whereas he is probably right, though. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, if you want to look at the movie in a romantic sense, right? Then he's right, Arthur, when he says that, right? That they should be together. There was one thing, one aspect of the movie that I thought was really well done, and this might have been the actor who portrayed, you know, a Kyo Song, but I loved how weary he looked throughout the whole mm -hmm. movie yeah, as an right. adult because. That is life and soul. It's very weary. And he touches on He describes on that. his job. He describes his mm -hmm. job. Like, it's like... And he was doing really well. He had gone to a good school and he had gotten a decent job. And mm -hmm. still it wasn't enough, right? Yeah, he so was an engineer, the, the typical path for yeah. a young Korean man. He studied engineering at a good school. Right. And he's working himself to death. Yeah. You know, it sounds Drinking like... Drinking soju yeah. with his buddies. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he can't... There's no overtime pay. There's... Mm -hmm. You know, he talks about how he can't finish work until he finishes all of his boss's mm -hmm, work. And mm -hmm. then, like, he has to do his work. And that kind of thing, casually said in a bar in the East Village, mm -hmm. sounds like, Ooh, oh, that must be hard. But then when you live it, right, and it becomes your life, mm -hmm. that I don't think anybody wants that. Like, I, I just don't think that that's worth, you know. Yeah, this is a problem in Seoul. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. He, but he, that's who he is. That's who, what he, his life is. Yeah. And so he says to her something like, you belonged here. Like you were always meant to come here. Mm -hmm. And you look basically saying, live your life here. Mm -hmm. I thought the director did a, did a good job of making him feel out of place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. While he was there and awkward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. And it always, you know, the, these movies that we watch always seem to become, they take on different angles when we talk about them, mm -hmm. take on more depth when we talk about them. I appreciate that.